to do this for in this number 45. Number 45. Of their blood, 
grant through their intercession that spreading your love among our brothers and sisters we may be your children both in name and in truth through our lord jesus christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit one god forever and ever Amen. First reading is taken from the book of Revelations. I, John, looked and behold a white cloud, and seated on the cloud, one like a son of man, with a golden crown on his head, and a sharp sickle in his hand. And another angel came out of the temple, calling with a loud voice to him who sat up on the cloud. Put in your sickle and reap, for the hour to reap has come, for the harvest of the earth is fully ripe. So he who sat upon the cloud swung his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. And another angel came out of the temple in heaven, and he too had a sharp sickle. Then another angel came out from the altar, the angel who has power over fire. And he called with a loud voice to him, who had his sharp sickle, Put in your sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for its grapes are ripe. So the angel swung his sickle on the earth, and gathered the vintage of the earth, and threw it into the great wine press of the wrath of God. This is the word of the Lord. Our response, the Lord comes to judge the earth. The Lord comes to judge the earth. Say to the nations, the Lord is king. The world he made from firm in his place. He will judge the people in fairness. The Lord comes to judge the earth. Let the heavens rejoice and earth be glad. Let the sea and all within it thunder praise. Let the land and all hears rejoice. The Lord comes to judge the earth. Then will all the trees of the wood shout for joy at the presence of the Lord, for he comes. He comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with justice. He will govern the people with his truth. The Lord comes to judge the earth. Please stand. Yes. 
said to them, nation will arise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, and in various places, famines and pestilences. And there will be terrors and great signs on the earth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I spent a little time at our Franciscan University in Rome called the Antonianum, named after St. Anthony. It was like the Tower of Babel because there were students from all around the world who studied there. So every time I sat down for lunch or supper, I'd sit some, next to somebody who spoke a different language. And the one occasion I sat next to a friar from Vietnam, and his English was very poor, and his Italian was very poor, my Italian was very poor, and my Vietnamese completely non-existent. But we tried to talk to each other anyway, and after almost everything I said, he would say, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> That's Friar from Vietnam can thank all the many Vietnamese martyrs for his faith. And that's what we are here to celebrate today. In 1988, Pope John Paul II dedicated this day to the vast number of Vietnamese martyrs, more than 100,000, both named and unnamed including Andrew Dundak, a Vietnamese priest, who was among the first group of 117 to be canonized in the year 1900. The first martyrs of Indochina were Spanish missionaries in 1580. The local rulers, regarding Christianity as a foreign incursion, responded with waves of savage persecution. The tortures inflicted on Christians in Vietnam are among the worst in recorded history. Many of the victims were suffocated, burned alive, had their limbs hacked off joint by joint, or their flesh torn from their bones. The martyrs included foreign bishops and priests, as well as countless lay people. Andrew Dunlack, a diocesan priest, was born in the year 1795. He grew up in Hanoi, where he met a catechist and decided to be baptized. His own dedication as a catechist led to his being selected for theological training and eventual ordination in 1823. In 1832, the Emperor Ming Man expelled all foreign priests and ordered Vietnamese Christians to renounce Christianity. Churches were destroyed and the teaching of Christianity was forbidden. Andrew was twice arrested, but managed to win his release. After being arrested a third time, he was beheaded on the 21st of December, 1839. I'd like to end with a small quote from St. Paul de Valentin. In the midst of these torments, which usually terrify others, I am, by the grace of God, full of joy and gladness, 
because I am not alone. Christ is with me. Our Master bears the whole weight of the cross, leaving the only the tiniest last bit. As we rejoice to share with St. Andrew Duncan and his companions the fact that they profess at so high a cost, let us turn our thoughts and prayers to the needs of all people, believers and not. That the Church, corporate witness to Christ and all he stood for, may be united in courageously presenting to the world the good news of freedom from sin and death. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. That world leaders might be inspired to set their hearts not on power, but on every opportunity for service of the weak and oppressed. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. For the churches that persecution forces into silence, that their faith may realize that mustard seeds too grow in silence. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. Let us remember those who are tortured and dehumanized by instruments of violent power, the victims and the oppressors that the sword may swiftly be returned to the scabbard and the wounds of hatred closed. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Our thoughts turn moreover to those who feel there is nothing worth living or fighting for, that upon them Christ may shed a ray of his light to dispel the gloom and warm their indifference into life. Lord, hear us. Lord, Let us implore God's protective and enlightening blessing on all organizations and persons who strive for the more effective preservation of human rights and personal and family dignity. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Lord, our God. May the lives of St. Andrew Dunbeck and his companions inspire us to greater endeavour in the service of your people. May our lives be abundant in good works through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed 
are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Receive, O Holy Father, the offerings we bring as we venerate the passion of the Holy Martyrs so that in the trials of this life we may always be found faithful and may offer ourselves to you as an acceptable sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyrs, Andrew Dunyak and his companions, poured out by Christ, to glorify your name, shows forth your marvellous works, by which our weakness perfects your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear your witness through Christ our Lord. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we are today. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for me, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The nervous of death. 
now desire to receive you into my soul, since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Renewed by the one bread, as we commemorate the holy martyrs, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that abiding as one in your love, we may merit by endurance and eternal crimes. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the mighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in the hour of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust down into hell, Satan and all the evil spirits, the one that through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our final hymn is number 133. Number 133. <laughs>